Uh, good afternoon, Sea Tropic Growers. This is Farmer Jones again. This is number uh, video number 43. And as you can look up and down the rows, we've almost completed our annual prune. And uh, while we've been foraging around, uh, we've been finding all sorts of food and edibles in the rows and even growing in the tree rows. So we just uh, noticed some sweet potato slips uh, coming out of this tree right here. And lo and behold, I started poking around and we've got all these beautiful sweet potatoes growing at the base of the banana. And it hasn't hurt, harmed the banana in any way from the look of it. So there's probably about two, three kilos of those sweet potatoes. And in the same square couple of metres of land, we've pulled out uh, these little pawpaws. And we've got probably about 20 kilos of pumpkins here. Look at that beauty. And all these pumpkins, all of these were just planted by themselves. Uh, the pumpkins, we often throw scraps around the trees and obviously there's seeds. And they act as mulch, but the seeds take off in the uh, rotten vegetables. Uh, so these, these pumpkins just seeded themselves. And these were obviously from scraps that we threw out. And um, it just goes to show how bountiful this system, system can be in a very, very small area of land. So there's three or four different things, not including the banana. So that's the perfect food forest, isn't it? Um, and things birds, we enjoy passion fruits that the birds plant. And if you just turn around and look behind you, there's a whole heap of passion fruits that we didn't plant. These guys here. have all been planted naturally and it's very common with most rows have these wild passion fruits that we don't know where they came from some bird uh, chewed up a parrot normally to chew these passion fruits and they just drop the seeds and we have a beautiful hand of bananas up there too so this is the very definition of uh, a syntropic food forest You'll find as your system matures that this, it gives so much back to you without, with very little effort. So if we were hungry, for example, and you know the supermarket shelves were empty, uh, we feel pretty confident that we could just forage around here and find enough to eat and get us by for a, for a while. So, so far this is just a 25 by 50 metre plot not including our other plots, but this plot alone could easily feed us if we were pensioners or we weren't working anymore or we became unemployed. Um, this system here could easily feed us. So too many bananas to poke a stick at. There's another hand of bananas just up there. Um, you know, as long as you're not too fussy, you could eat bananas and uh, the kale's over there that's still growing that's last year's kale and we didn't have to replant this and if you love kale which personally i don't but my customers do uh, we could easily subsist on that as a leafy green now this was uh, left over from last year and it just came back in the recent rains so we don't have to replant and it seems to be doing okay in the shady alleys and then a parsley row there too doing well in the shade and what's interesting also these broccoli plants uh, if you notice they were cut off with a whippersnipper uh, last year so after we harvested i went through and cut all the stems off and yet these guys are growing back and some of them have even produced heads on them again but this leaf here on the broccoli is very nutritious the italians taught me 
that they love to steam these broccoli leaves. And we followed through and they're now one of our favorite greens. So, you know, just looking around, it's just an abundant food system. Look at these beautiful passion fruits here again. There's a particular variety here. The yellow. And because we didn't purchase this uh, particular passion fruit and we didn't buy the seed, we, I don't know the name of the variety, sorry, but the birds might be able to tell you. So look at this beautiful passion fruit. They go absolutely nuts climbing up the bananas. So if any of you are uh, in doubt that Syntropics can feed humans and fulfill their, their basic needs, put them aside because I've visually shown you that uh, the entire system is just a, a food and timber factory, if you will. And there's no stopping what you can grow down these alleyways, depending on the amount of light that's uh, coming in. So previously, as you know from previous videos, this was very shaded out. And now that we've done our hard trim for the year in winter, in the, coming into spring uh, in a couple of months, uh, we may, the opportunities to, or maybe open up to plant um, more things in these alleyways while the light's filtering in. So we expect the system to boom. We've done an entire heavy prune. We reduced all the stems down to three, or banana stems that is, and we've trimmed all of our ukes up and the biomass is looking great. Um, so we expect a good uh, gibberellic acid um, boost and we expect a lot of uh, vigorous growth coming in, up in the next few months. So just bear in mind uh, that this system is only two years old. This is exactly, literally two years to the date that we planted our very first rows up the top there. And already, uh, not only do we, we um, pull 500 to $800 worth of bananas out of the system a week, uh, but we could easily feed our family. Um, so it's well worth investing in. It's a forever garden. Uh, pretty much you plant once and pick forever. So that's the best kind of garden you can have. So on that note, we'll sign out. This is Farmer Jones for Victory Organic Farm, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.